let's go so have you um did you see uh, that they released it just a couple of days ago like the samsung galaxy s5 prime uh yeah they they released it in just south korea though right yeah i like the phone personally but i don't i think it it's what the samsung galaxy s5 should have been you know yeah i agree um, because then when i look at the specs it has a 2k display it has three gigs ram mm -hmm. has the latest processors processor i yeah, think samsung, samsung just re realizes they messed it up when they released the samsung galaxy s5 yeah they, it has a snapdragon 805 yeah and that that didn't ship when With the, original the samsung one. galaxy s5 was released which was february yeah so i think they i think i would have preferred if they had just waited until this processor was available to be shipped it was available to be shipped because um what was it uh, was it all oppo or was it um the one plus that already had it and they were talking about it and stuff i think it was oppo I, yeah i think it was the fine seven yeah they had it already and they were shipping it out Mm -hmm. But Samsung just, I think, dropped the ball on it. They were just trying to catch up with the HTC One M8. So yeah, because yeah, I agree. So then they tried to like release it too quickly, and they yeah, messed think, it up. I think they should have waited, uh, just maybe even if it came down to a couple months, because this thing be beats the Galaxy S Five in every regard. Yeah. Um. It there's just no cons to it. Now it has a two K display. But it has the same amount of battery, 28 milliamp hours, and on all the reviews I've seen of it, it doesn't even impact the battery life. Yeah, because so, I watched a video on Park Now. They were talking yeah. about like how um how the battery life didn't even get bad when they were using it. it. Actually, got better, which was interesting. Yeah. Considering that it has more of a processor, has more like a bigger display, mm -hmm. and has more RAM and stuff, and it has yeah. the new. LTE. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but the thing with this phone is that it's sounds like a Samsung Galaxy Note four almost, you know. Yeah. It's a small. I think that's of the probably Note. probably why they released it just for South Korea, just maybe to see if everything worked out properly. Yeah, and... but the thing with this is that it has five G connection speeds. I wish we could yeah. have tried that in America and Canada, you know. Yeah. South Korea just has everything compared to us. We get all the features like a couple of couple of years after they do. Yeah. But yeah, I think this phone has potential. If it comes to America, it'll probably sell more than the S five, considering the specs. Yeah. I I don't think it's gonna be once it comes here. I don't think it's gonna be that good. You know, as good as the S five with just normal consumers because they've already bought the S five and. You're not going to be able to tell a big difference between these phones because they're both so good, unless you're actually looking for a difference. But it's going to be the the better phone of the two. It's significantly better when it comes to specs, but I don't think normal people are going to be able to, to get the difference between these two. And I don't think they're going to care enough to spend, you know, like 250 even 600 if you're off contract, more dollars to buy just a slightly better phone in real life performance now what would have uh, if it does come to america i hope they drop down the price of the s5 to like 300 dollars, like the oppo find 7 and the one plus yeah. one now yeah. that'd be a steal i would take the s5 any day because of the features it has yeah but i doubt samsung will do that samsung will do the apple route and keep it at 600 dollars and keep the s5 ltea at the same price yeah, because right now I'm comparing it to the LG G3, and uh, this thing didn't. This thing came out at the end of May, so they waited, and they got the 2K display in there. They got everything that it has a Snapdragon 801, so th there's no 805, but it also has three gigs of RAM and a better battery by 200 milliamp hours. So the G3 best the Galaxy S5. But if they release the LTA version, or the Prime version, uh, it's going to be better than the G3 on the spec sheet. So I don't think there's any phone that can even come close to competing with it. But unfortunately, 
we can't even buy it. So. Yeah, from what I'm seeing, the uh, LG G3 has like the same specs as the Prime, except it has yeah. a better bat battery. Yeah, and it doesn't have the 805 for some reason. Yeah, yeah, it has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 801. Yeah. But it has better graphics. Adreno, they're going with the Adreno. Samsung is just going with basic graphics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they have three gigs of RAM. The normal S5 only has two, so. Yeah, but the S5, the one that was released in South Korea, the original S5, that had like four gigs of RAM in South Korea. So oh. I wonder what is Samsung doing with this phone, you know? Yeah, I think they got a little confused with their timeline. I have a question is with Samsung is that why they release so much of phones in the first place. They should just focus on one phone in each category, you know? When yeah, like I think I think it's a good idea to have like a Note line and then your Galaxy line, like your Galaxy S line. But I'm looking at the like other phone section here and it says like Galaxy S5 mini, Galaxy Star, Galaxy Young, Galaxy Ace, yeah. Galaxy S5 Sport and it just keeps going on and on. They should just have it like this. They should have one that's rugged, that that fits the uh, Samsung Galaxy S5 Active. Then yeah. they should have one that is for countries that cannot have the big spec phones, mm -hmm. per se. So they should have the Samsung Galaxy S5 Mini. And then the mm -hmm. phablet, which should be the Note. And yeah. then the normal phone, which is the Samsung Galaxy S5. They should do it like that. Just split it yeah. up in groups. Have one yeah, phone that... in each group. Yeah. Because what I don't understand in the phablet in industry is that Samsung has another phone which is called the Mega, which is even bigger than the Samsung Galaxy Note, but it has horrible specs. Yeah, and I don't know anyone who's even thought about buying that, so... It's like a tablet almost, but they're considering it a phone, which I don't even understand what Samsung's trying to do there. Yeah. Because in my mind, why would you even release a phone that has, what do you say, um, mediocre specs? And looks like a tablet. Yeah, I'm looking at the Mega's screen size, and it's it's a dual core processor with a 6.3 inch screen. I think it has a 720p display. I think it. That's what I heard. Um. Yeah, 720p display. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's ridiculous. It has Android 4.2, so not even Jelly Bean, not even 4.3. Um. It's, it's, it's kind of sad why well, I don't know what they're doing with it, but yeah, That's I don't know just, what they're doing with the this, Prime. This is, why, that, this is the problem with Samsung. They just want, they just want to have all, they just want to dominate the market share. They just want to dominate that they just release mediocre phones that don't even fit their criteria, you know? Yeah. And they're just so redundant. It's, it's. Ridiculous. Like, I like what HTC is doing. Like, they're releasing one phone each year. That's it. No other phones. Yeah. And if they do release a phone, they don't even confuse it with their original, like, the the main phone that they release, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're just completely different names, like the HTC Desire. But Samsung goes with the same name almost. Mm -hmm. Like, with yeah. this one, they named it Samsung Galaxy S5 LTE A. Yeah, like, Prime sounds way better. Yeah, it sounds better because then it sounds like it's in a different group, you know? Yeah. But this one seems like they're trying to release a better version of the S5 a couple of months after it was re released, you know? Yeah, it's, it's kind of... If if I had bought an S5, I would have been pretty upset just because... I'm just a... thinking about all the people that bought an S5 right now, you know? How ticked yeah. off they are. Yeah. Because Cause usually, you, you, the next year... You're gonna get a better product but not like within months yeah this is like barely even three months yeah now what one thing i would have liked that the s5 ltea should have had was the metal back i was hoping they would give a metal back for it yeah because the s5 costs just as much as the htc 18 uh 1m8 and that one has a metal back and it looks amazing and this one is plastic and it's cheap yeah, I used the Samsung Galaxy S3 a couple of years ago. I liked the phone, but the thing that I had a problem with it was durability. The My screen got scratched up like 
in a couple of days. My back of this thing broke in a couple of days, the plastic cover. Mm-hmm. And that was pointless. But now I'm using the M7, the HTC One M7, and I've dropped this thing about a billion times, and it's not even cracked at all, let alone the back. Yeah. Well, compared to my S3 and compared to my M7, my M7 is more durable than the S3. So I'm thinking, why didn't Samsung just make it more, add a metal back to the S5 LTE, you know? Would have made more sense. Yeah. I know that, for one thing, if you add a metal back, I know it's harder to get a removable battery and a SIM card, an SD card, my bad. Yeah. Uh, and it's way easier with a plastic back, but... I think, if I'm not mistaken, HTC, the One Eight, the One M Eight has that as well. Yeah, the thing with this uh, HTC One M Eight has the SD card slot. It has a metal back. It's perfect, you know. Yeah. So I don't understand what is Samsung doing, you know? Like, why can't you just make a metal back phone and then make a plastic back? Make options like the Moto Moto X almost. Yeah, the Moto X was good. The Moto X was an amazing phone. Yeah. The ability I, to customize uh, it. Yeah. Specs wise, it was horrible, but. It, it wasn't necessarily horrible. I mean, it has a 600 at the time, which wasn't bad. The best was the 800, but. Yeah, at the I time, think, Samsung Galaxy S4 had an 800, I think. Yeah, and the Nexus 5 that came out had an 800, but I would rather buy the Moto X at that time, just because it's it has a lot of cool features like. If it's like a sleeve, I can say okay Google and it'll do its thing. Yeah, but the thing with the uh, Modem X was that its price, you know, it was like four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. Yeah. I wish it was like two hundred dollars, and then I wouldn't call it a horrible phone because for its specs, it's a horrible phone. Yeah. So yeah. What do you think? The about- good thing. I think I think this phone is the closest to. A perfect phone along with the G3 uh, just specs wise at least but I just wish the UI was a little better I still don't like Samsung's touch ways I think it's just the worst UI ever yeah speaking of UI I like to see what happens when they release Android L how many people will actually use touch Wiz then yeah LG's um what's LG's called I forgot LG's is um it doesn't really have a name, but it's it's a pretty big skin too. Yeah, and who will use um HTC's um Sense UI? You know. Yeah, I like I like HTC Sense. I really like Sense it. Sense looks but... like Android L in every way. Yeah, but Gal- the Galaxy line, like that's why I don't buy any Samsung products. I just do not like the software. Well, the software is amazing. Changing... Samsung software is amazing. They just have features overloaded. You know. Yeah, like, I, I just don't like how it looks. Like, if I want to change that, I have to go through the trouble of rooting, unlocking, and putting in, like, CyanogenMod. mod, and that's way too much trouble for me. Well, I'd actually, rather just... I think nowadays CyanogenMod mod is going in the, into the line of where they are adding a lot of features. I'm running the yeah. latest CyanogenMod mod firmware on my phone, and mm-hmm. they're just having a bunch of Android L features here. Yeah, yeah. that's the good thing about CyanogenMod. mod. They're really quick to get stuff out even before it's on Android. Yeah, they have like the new, like the ability to search in your settings. They got that feature from Android L here, and I'm running having it already. And I have to say, I've used it a lot. Mm-hmm. But you can get the Android L animations, by the way, now. Yeah, I think you. I think developers have pretty much gotten everything from Android L. Yeah, at least most things. Nova Launcher onto... updated today, and they added the Android L yeah. animations. To their yeah, launcher. Nova launcher. I heard about that. And we both have uh, videos up on both of our channels on getting different Android L features onto your phone. Some of them you need to be rooted. Some of them you don't have to be rooted. So be sure to check those out. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you think about Android Wear? Um, I think it's by far the best smartwatch we have on the market now. Um, I think nothing even come close to it right now. Just like the Gear Fit and the other Samsung products, again, I just don't think they're even functional when it's compared to these. Because I just think the operating system, the fundamentals, the, the thing it's built on is just really nice. And it helps that 
uh, manufacturers can't change it. They can't skin it. So Samsung can't put TouchWiz on a on a smartwatch. Uh, yeah, it's that's gonna be pretty pure much Android. So I think uh, Google realizes they dropped the ball when they released Android. Um, what was it, Froyo? Mm-hmm. And they let every Android manif- phone manufacturer customize their operating system. I think Google realized that they made a big mistake there, because mm-hmm. now pretty much everything is fragmented. Yeah. So now mm-hmm. they're trying to stop it by saying, no, you cannot customize Android Wear. They're just ending it all, which yeah, I think is a great thing. Yeah, because I, I, the gear, the Samsung gear watches, I, the gear, that's just what it's called. Uh, those, honestly, the UI just, it's bad compared to Android Wear. I mean, this, the software here is just so nice everything just works seamlessly and it it's it's i think the best when it comes to functionality the best smartwatch and once the moto 360 comes out i think a lot of like just normal consumers are going to be buying it not only because it's functional but because it just looks good yeah the, i think what the moto 360 did was amazing the, like this is what moto does they make great products yeah the moto 3, 360 looks like a normal person's watch you know mm-hmm doesn't look like a nerd's gadget, you know? Yeah. Because when I look at the Samsung Galaxy, what was it called? Uh, Galaxy Gear. Live? Yeah. It looks like a rectangular piece of, um, like a square, pretty much. It doesn't yeah. look stylish. It doesn't look like a normal, everyday watch. Yeah. And, I mean, the bezels just do not look nice. Um, the bezels, apparently, for smartwatches and phones are where the display drivers are. And... Apparently, with the Moto 360, they managed to put the display drivers in a really, really compact space, so they they could have pretty much no bezels. So yeah, from what I entire... saw, they put it on the top of the screen. Like, there's these two black bars on the top of the screen, like on Android phones. We have that top screen bezels. Yeah. For the camera and where it used to be, the hardware buttons used to lie. Mm-hmm. They made it like that on a on a uh smartwatch yeah and so the entire watch is pretty much a screen and it's circular and it just looks nice and the other thing however the one problem i've heard about with the circular design is since there are no circular watches released now so both of the watches now are the lg g watch and the gear live those are both square so all the but i think there's about 25 apps so far for the smartwatches all of them or at least a lot of them are compatible only for square watches so once the yeah. moto 360 comes out developers are going to have to change it to a circular shape so in the future if android wear runs on both a square and a circular uh watch developers are going to have to kind of make their app twice for two different shapes that might be a problem so from what I'm looking, there's like about 67 apps right now on the Play Store that are compatible with the Android Wear. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of apps. Yeah. I can't wait to see like what more apps come. And one of the things I would like to see on the Android Wear is um, pretty much making the UI a little bit more easier to use. Because I think look at that and you have to be sliding on your sc- on that small screen. I don't know how it would be. I don't, I've never used one, so I don't know how easy it is, but it looks kind of difficult to be sm- putting your big fingers inside that small screen and trying to slide everything, you know? Yeah, I think it's not as difficult as it may seem. I think you just have to get used to it. I mean, like, yeah. a slide down is just going through your notifications. Uh, some of the notifications have a slide to the left. For example, the weather notification, it has a slide to the left where it has, like, a forecast. And then a slide to the right just deletes the notification, and you can never get it back so there's no undo button but the only thing i'm concerned about is how you're going to be able to there's no way to get back to your like home screen your watch face without sliding through all of your notifications and how do you know if there if you need to slide to the left to like view your action like if you get an email if you slide to the left you can delete you can reply and stuff like that but for a new user how is he going to know that he has to slide to the left I wonder if companies will start to add like buttons like we see on the normal watches where we can set the time and stuff like that. Yeah. 
I wonder if companies will start to set buttons where we can just hit the one button and it'll take us home to the watch face. Yeah, I think there's one button on the Gear Live, but that's just an on-off button. Yeah, so... Samsung never makes buttons properly. I just don't like Samsung and their buttons, you know? Yeah, uh, I think... I don't, I don't really think I would like a button on a smart watch just because it wouldn't look cool. I don't think it yeah, would but... look as good. Yeah, but it makes sense because normal watches have buttons on them, you know, so yeah, definitely. it wouldn't look that bad if they make it small and like a normal watch almost mm -hmm. and not make it like obnoxiously obvious, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. like one smartwatch, I think it was Samsung Galaxy Neo, I think it was called. Mm -hmm. It had an obnoxiously big home button in the middle of the watch face, like yeah. on the bottom of the watch face. Yeah. That didn't sell, obviously, but, like, you cannot make it obnoxiously obvious, you know? You gotta make it minimalistic, and it has to be, like, a normal button, you know? On a normal watch. Yeah, and the only thing I think is, at least in the coming up, like, recent, that is gonna be able to compete with Android Wear is probably just, if anything, Apple releases. People are just gonna buy it because it's Apple. Uh, I think if they do the right things, if they can somehow get the functionality but also make it look cool, kind of like a compromise between those, then I think you have a pretty good competitor. Because if you try, you need a balance with these smartwatches. If you have too much functionality, you're going to have like a gear, like a Samsung Galaxy gear, which was just terrible, the first one at least, because it had a camera and it had all yeah, that these unnecessary sense. things. And it just looked terrible on your, on your wrist. It looked like... Like who the hell wants to take a picture with their smartwatch it's virtually impossible because the camera is virtually on your hand so it'll be taking pictures of your thumbs almost yeah and the other one the samsung gal the samsung gear fit which is this like wristband for about 160 dollars that lacked features it looks cool it looks like a really cool wristband but the only thing it does is show time and count steps yeah but i didn't like how it looked you know it looked a little bit like Weird yeah, to me. Like it, it provides notifications, but that's pretty much it. And you have to use S Health, and you have to have a Samsung phone, and all these other requirements that just don't work. Like, was it Samsung that released that watch ring, almost like a ring, smart ring, or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. What features did that have? Like, did it have? What did it? What, what was it able to do? I don't, I don't. I don't know. I haven't heard of like a ring, but. This gear fit definitely looks like a ring, but I don't know. Let me see which company released that. But yeah, I I think the developers at Google I/O had the choice of taking either the G Watch or the Gear Live, and looking at the spec sheet, if that's even important, I don't know if it's really important. But uh, the G Watch has a 0 0.02 inch higher, uh, bigger screen. But the uh, Gear Live has a higher pixels per inch. It's definitely the better screen. It's sharper. It has more color uh, vibrant. Uh, weight wise, it's the Gear Live is four grams uh, lighter, so you're not going to be able to tell the difference. The G Watch has a 400 milliamp hour battery. The Gear Live only has a 300, and I think that's a pretty important factor, just because this thing's going to be on for a, a pretty long time throughout the day. And I don't want to charge another device every day, so I think the 100 milliamp which is kind of a big deal. They have the same processor, the same RAM, everything else is pretty much the same, except the Gear Live has a heart rate monitor. So these uh, smartwatches are really similar. They have comparable specs, maybe you could argue except for the battery. And the G Watch just comes out and is $30 more expensive. Yeah, but I... the one thing the Samsung Galaxy. Uh, the gear watch has this that that battery you know the way that you charge it it's just cumbersome you know it's like a huge docking station yeah it's a pogo pin usb apparently yeah it's a huge docking station almost like the size of my uh, yeah it's almost the size of my um half the size of my smartphone you know yeah i wish they made it like it's smaller like the lg g watch you know just yeah small. What I would like to see, and I think the Moto 360 is going to have this, uh, just based off of rumors I've heard, but what I would like to see is a watch, a smartwatch that just 
you put it down on a wireless charging station and it just charges you don't have to think worry about oh which way is it positioned did i click it into place just just throw it on there regardless of which direction and just take a nap and it'll charge wirelessly that would be awesome just like how you could put your phone down on a wireless charger station that would be pretty cool yeah i expect um the moto 360 to have that because of what nexus has been able to do with like um docking stations and wireless charging and stuff yeah but speaking of apple I expect Apple's to be pretty good, but it'll have like a price line of $500 as usual, you know? Yeah, that's the thing with Apple. You really don't know what their price is going to be. Well, from previous products, you can say that their price will be around the expensive range, you know? Yeah, and I, I don't know how uh, they're going to be doing this. Like, I don't know how much they think iWatches should be costing. Um... Uh, looking on here, it says a late 2014 launch. That's probably going to be launching the same time the new iPhone launches. So September, end of September. Uh, that That's going to be a pretty big conference in September, the end of September. Just like every year when uh, uh, iPhones and iPads launch, I'm probably going to see an iWatch. I just, if they if they charge you like $399, let's say, for an iWatch, then I'm going to go out and buy an iPad, or an iPad mini. So I don't think they're going to be keeping it very expensive. I think they have to keep it beneath 300 maybe a max of like 350 but I don't think they can really raise it that much. Yeah, but considering Apple's previous history with price lines, they probably will give it a pretty hefty price tag. Just considering well, Apple's previous history. Yeah, but... For example, the uh, iPad Mini Retina display, that's three ninety nine dollars. Yeah. By and... the time, by the time you know the next September comes around, there's going to be a new iPad Mini. So this one will probably drop down to like three forty nine, maybe even two ninety nine. And if I can buy a, if I can buy a tablet for the, like, the same price as a watch, which I can still do, I can get a Nexus Seven twenty thirteen at the same price as a Gear Live. Yeah, but that, the thing with the Apple products is that they're, the Android tablets, right? Look at the Nexus line, right? The Nexus, mm-hmm. I can buy two Nexus 7 2013 models for the same price line of an, one iPad mini. Yeah, and I actually have my Nexus 7 right here. It's yeah. it's not, like, cheap or anything. I, I just don't think they're making as much profit as Apple is. Which one but, do you have? Because I have the 2012. No, I have the 2013 one. Yeah, I have, I have the 2012, and I have to say it's shit. <laughs> like, I'm not kidding. It's, like, horrible. Yeah, that's that's actually another thing with with the Android things. Um, once you have, like, once about two years passes, you kind of are forced to buy a new device just because the new versions of Android come out, and all of a sudden they lose compatibility or they're, they need higher uh, hardware requirements. For example, Android KitKat wasn't available for the Galaxy Nexus, which yeah, but you a... can port it with Cyan and Jamal, so it's all pretty much the exact same version of KitKat. Well, yeah, but, like, for example, the the Galaxy Nexus released, I think, the beginning of 2012, or the end of 2011, and 2013, there, you couldn't officially, there was no more support for it, and now that's going to happen for the Nexus 4 after Android L, and the Nexus 10, and this is not a problem Apple users have. I mean, the Apple, the iOS 8, I'm pretty sure that's compatible with a pretty much all, or at least most uh, Well, Apple I used devices. to have an iPod, right? iPod 4. And I have mm-hmm. to say that after, when I got to iOS 5, I think, it just started to bum out on me. It just couldn't run pr- uh, normal apps. It just couldn't handle basic tasks. Yeah, because right now, iOS 8 is supported for all the way back to the iPad 2, the iPad, yeah. the first iPad mini, and the iPhone 4S. That is, that's not going to be happening with Android. I mean, it will be a little slower, obviously, but but I don't think it's such a good, like, I don't think Android can keep that up. I think they have to extend their life a little bit more 
but it's hard to do that when you have companies like Samsung that are producing 20 phones in like one year. You have so much fragmentation. If you extend it, you're just having too many phones in the market that are working. But the thing that I like about Android is that you can port your own software. Yeah. So even old phones still run. Like I have a 2009 Android phone, which was the original Galaxy Nexus, I think. And I, a couple of days ago, decided out of the blue, I wanted to download Signage Mod on it, and it did. And it runs Android KitKat on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it has art on it. So using mm -hmm. it, it's almost the same as my HTC One M M7 in terms of speed, just because yeah. of art and all the Signage Mod features. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that... one thing I like about Android. You can just port. And it'll be interesting to see if they make a Cyanogen mod makes like a Cyanogen Cyanogen Wear, like a Android Wear, like where you can like root your smartwatch maybe. Yeah, they know. did that already. Um, it's on XDA actually. Oh, so that'll be interesting to see. And it's something I see. I think this should be a standard for all smartwatches, like every single one, is that it has to be waterproof and dust resistant, so IP67 at least, and. Fortunately, both of these uh, Android Wear watches are IP67 certified, so that is definitely covered. But yeah, Signage Mod actually released a software for um, the Android Wear, but the problem with it is that some of the features aren't fully compatible yet. Oh. Because it's in beta. Yeah. But yeah, I think like the future of Android is really good because in what Google said was by 2015, they're going to have no Android phones that don't run KitKat, don't run pure Android, I mean. Mm -hmm. So in about 2015, there won't be TouchWiz mm, yeah. and Sense on our newest smartphones. That's what uh, Google said is their goal. Yeah, that's their goal, but I don't know if that's reasonable. I mean, Samsung's even doing their own operating system with Tizen. And yeah, I bet Samsung, that's what Samsung's probably going to do. They're just going to port it over to Tizen and just going to start running Tizen on. Yeah, because I think it's their backup plan. It's been uh, their plan for like a couple of years now. <laughs> They've been just promoting Tizen like crazy. Yeah. Well, I think I think these are going to be pretty successful. I think if I was like a, like a CEO at Pebble, I would be pretty worried because the Pebble is really, really bad compared to this. Like, it has, what is that? Like a, like a, like a pixelated screen, like a really bad screen. It's well, at one point, the Pebble was actually the best smartwatch you can buy. Pebble? Yeah, at one point. Well, yeah, at one point. But now, when Android wears out, it's doing so It's so good. It's cheap, relatively cheap. It's the same price as the Pebble. Pebble and... kind of reminds me of the Palm Pre, you know? When Palm yeah. Pre was the best thing you could get. And then yeah. the iPhone came out and the Palm Pre just went bankrupt. The yeah, Palm and... Company just went bankrupt. Yeah. Looks yeah, like the Pebble's on that direction pretty much in a couple of months. Yeah, it's pretty unfortunate. Like, Pebble has a lot more apps right now, but I just they think have they, the have most to, apps, I think. they have to get into the LCD screens. Even if you have to charge it every day, I think you, they need to update just to compete with Android Wear. Because they have the apps, they have more apps, they have the ecosystem. Because they came out earlier, they have everything done. They just need some hardware updates. Like, the Pebble Steel... I think that looks great. I think it looks great. Now they just have to get the software down, which I think just first thing you got to do is improve the screen. But I don't know. The thing with the um, Android is now that you just look at it and say, so we're pretty much porting our smartphones onto our wrists. Yeah, and that's exactly what Android Auto was. They literally showed you a picture of a phone, like you plug it into your car and you have it on your car. Speaking of Android Auto, I think Android Auto is pretty much better than Apple's Apple Car. Uh, what was Apple's one called? I think Apple it was CarPlay or something. Yeah, CarPlay. Yeah, I think, I think... Uh, Apple did a better job. I mean, Android did a better job at it. Yeah, I think I think CarPlay is more of. I don't think it has voice activation. It has Siri. It has Siri voice control. Sorry. Uh, Siri but... is just awful on my mind. Like, I tried using Siri on my Sam, uh, it, my iPod 5, which I recently got. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. and it doesn't recognize your voice as good as Google now does, and it has a very yeah. robotic voice too, even yeah. if it does recognize it. The ba- the good thing here, similar to Android Auto, is just plug in your iPhone or just plug in your phone, but here you have to have some. It works better. Uh, when you have a hardware that is optimized, for example, you have to have a Siri button on your steering wheel. Not all cars are going to have that, obviously. And it says available on select new cars in 2014. Uh, Google got a lot of major partners. I think more than Apple. Google had Nissan, Honda, Hyundai. You know what's so weird about it is that Google has the same partners as Apple does. So I want to like. Yeah. What's up with these companies? Are, have they ever ties with Apple or are they okay. just working together? I'm looking at the tech companies. Right now, the only partners, at least in 2014, that are officially with Apple are Ferrari, Honda, Hyundai, Mercedes Benz, and Volvo. And yeah, then Apple is going for the, um, what do you call Luxury the, car yeah, industry. Luxury. And then in the future, they have. Audi, BMW, Chevy, Chrysler, Ford. You have all the major ones, Toyota and stuff. The uh, thing with Apple is that they need to stop trying to appeal to the luxury users. If they're going to make money, they need to stop doing that because there's only a handful of people who have a billion dollars in their pocket. Yeah, I, I think it's just kind of like premium. The feel that they're it's going to be premium, that's what they're going for. Uh that's but, what happened with BlackBerry, and they flopped out trying to do that. They yeah. appealed to premium business users and not the general commu- consumer, and it basically ended up their company just going bankrupt. Yeah, that that's something I think Apple's going to learn eventually, uh, just like how Microsoft is Well, learning. Microsoft kind of did it to themselves when they started to make Windows look different. When they tried well, yeah, to- but if you look at their Surface lineup, that's ridiculous. It's like eight hundred dollars for an i yeah, five that... processor, like tablet thing that doesn't have a good keyboard, doesn't have a trackpad properly. Well, the keyboard I... I actually argue with you that the keyboard I actually would buy. Well, yeah, but it's like an extra hundred dollars in addition. Yeah, to that's the, the only thing. Like if it was an accessory not coming with the product, yeah. I would just buy it. I would. I would rather just buy a laptop. Like I know that Sony makes a lot of nice two in one laptops. That are way better and way more cost effective than the Surface. Yeah, but Sony can kind of ended up discontinuing the line of laptops now. Yeah, but it, I think it'll be interesting to see where the smartwatch thing goes. I think the two main competitors are going to be Apple, uh, Android Wear, and I think Pebble's going to stay in there. I think Pebble has a really good ecosystem going. Pebble's going to be like the um, third, like Android and Apple and Microsoft. Pebble's yeah. going to be the Microsoft of smartwatches, I have a feeling. Yeah, because I don't think Microsoft even... I think they're way behind. Microsoft isn't even thinking about smartwatches this is, right now. This even... is Microsoft's big mistake, you know? They keep on doing this every time. Like, when the smartphones came out, they took, like, two years before they released their first smartphone. Yeah. yeah. And they're going to re- realize again in the future that they made a mis- big mistake. Like, I think it was a couple of years ago, Steve Ballmer said, we didn't realize the potential of the iPad, and now we regret it. Because they made fun of the iPad, saying it was... Trash. Just a bigger iPhone, yeah, yeah. And look how it came to bite him in the ass, you know. Mm-hmm. It just ended up killing him personally. Yeah. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, leave your comments down in the comment section below. What you guys think is gonna happen? Um, I think that's pretty much it. What about you? Yeah. So that's pretty much it for this podcast. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a like, subscribe to both of our channels, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next Sunday.